The one that's in that strip mall. The BMMB? Yeah. He heard it. Oh, yesterday. maybe they're plugging us already. I have an interview with them on the 14th. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, this coming week. So. I heard him. He comes to me and he's like, yeah, I was listening to radio yesterday and I heard the name. I was like, oh. So, yeah, I heard some other people, so I didn't know what they were. What is the station? WMMB. Yeah, but what is the... Do you know what they play? Yeah. What kind of music? It was, it was, it's more like news, news talk kind of thing. Oh, okay. Like they have whatever they're all called. Snooze, news talk radio. Snooze talk. Yeah, so um, I figure I'll have that interview and also the WFIT interview played today at 4.30, so it's during like, you know, the yeah. rush hour type thing. And then they're also playing it three times next week. Cool. Considering the fact that uh, there have been more um, unexpected emergencies in this show, more cast sicknesses, more uh, shrunken costumes, and other things that uh, just added to our stress, I feel great! Yeah! Stumbling into him and falling onto him for 
for uh, support, right? There probably will be other things that you can support on. So we come out here, you know, and we're boasting. Where are the men? You know, like, okay? I want you guys to be on a ship that is rocking and rolling. Don't worry about how we're going to rock and roll yet, but... Kinky. I kind of like Zeppelin myself, but... Okay, so... So I want you guys to get the feeling that you're on a completely unsteady ground. So you can't be all standing like this. I don't want to do it. Well, um... I mean, I'm a big fan of Shakespeare, and I think that uh, The Tempest is one of Shakespeare's more unique plays. Um, it's really very rich. It combines so many elements of his work, comedy and drama and suspense, and in sort of a very surrealistic, magical setting. So um, it's a really challenging piece to do, and, and I was just excited about, uh, about having the opportunity to do it. Um, Blow till thou burst thy wind. Blow till thou burst thy wind, if room enough. Good boatswain, have care! Where's the master? I pray now, keep him alone! Where's the master, boatswain? Do you not hear him? You mar our labor! Keep to your cabins, you do assist the storm! Hey, good, be patient. When the sea is, hence, what cares the roars for the name of king? To cabin! Silence. Well, the, the 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 Tempest is it, it was almost a, it was Shakespeare's last play, um, so he was basically giving it his all uh, as he went through uh, the show. He drew from everything. He drew from you know, uh, nature. Uh, he drew from animal instincts of man through Caliban, and um, the, the the very essence of, of the, the very essence nature of man uh, in the dealings of Antonio. And Sebastian in relationship to their brothers, uh, you know, little brother trying to urge up the power of the larger brother. It's for the period. It was. It almost seems like a, a tragedy, and you know, um, an action flick. But in reality, is it's it's a romantic comedy. It's just set against the back, backdrop of this tragedy, you know, revenge style. But um, Shakespeare incorporates it very well in, into that. Right. Sir, one tell. When every grief is entertained, it's offered. Comes to the entertainer. Uh, okay. Oh. Tell. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Dolar comes to him indeed. You have spoken truer than you purposed. You take it. You have taken it wiser than I bet you should. Therefore, my lord. Why? What a spendthrift he is. I prithee spare. Well, I have done, but yet... Yeah. Really Which, you Adrian, for a good wager, must be good. Oh, the old cop. Mm. The cop. Done. The wager? The match. Though this island does seem to be a <laughs> desert. <laughs> so you're paid. Oh, sorry. Uninhabitable and almost yes. inaccessible. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I got it. I got the lock. Go back to uh, <laughs> go back to hers first. So you're <laughs> and um, the cock roll is her. The old cock is him. Right. I'm the what? You're the cock. <laughs> you're the cock roll. You're the cock roll. Cock roll. Short for cock teams. Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Yeah. And he says, he says a laughter. Show me your cock teams. We're a wet, so. Wait, when he says a laughter, yeah. and you really? say a match, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's the wager, right? It's, it's the wager, so when you say a match, it's like, I'll take that bet. See, uh, a match. Like, like, I'll see, I'll see that bet. Okay. Well, my vision for The Tempest really is, um, to sort of think outside the box compared to a lot of the uh, realistic modern pieces that we've done in the past. Um, to have the setting abstract enough where it allows some imagination in the part of the audience. And to just make a real powerful, powerful show. Um, right from the very beginning, I want it to really sort of knock the audience back. Um, and uh, I want to emphasize the sort of dark, surreal aspect of The Tempest as opposed to maybe sort of the... Some people choose to do The Tempest as a much lighter piece. Um, I have suffered, but those I saw suffer. 
Yeah, okay, stop. Now, you see that, oh, I got suffer with those I saw suffer. You see this, there's this rising tone at the end of all the words. Okay, and so what happens is, it always makes you sound like you're going like this. Okay, so I, I just want you to be aware of that. When you go over your lines and you're practicing them and memorizing them and stuff, try to look at um, pausing and look at words, especially with like ER sounds, are what are going to cause you to go up. So when you encounter those kinds of words, I want you to try to taper that off, okay? To make it sound more like a conversational tone, okay? Otherwise, the same emotion happens throughout every single word. Okay. The biggest challenge for this play, I think, is going to be to take all the, uh, the roles that we have, you know, the actors, the technical crew, uh, sound, lights, props, costumes, um, just bringing that all together and making it work is, I mean, because you can have all these individual pieces, but the director and assistant director need to bring them all together into just one big, uh, one, one big show, and that's going to be the biggest challenge because we can do all the individual parts. It's just with the actors need to know the technical crew, and the technical crew need to know the actors. And with what Lee's doing, he's bringing the technical crew and the actors together at least a month in advance, which will help the will help the show just move move along so smoothly because the actors will know what the tech crew is doing, the tech crew will is knowing what the actors are doing. It'll be almost like one mind, one one show, instead of. The tech crew has, has their idea of the show and the actors have their idea of the show. If we could get that all together into one idea, yeah. it would be great. Um, just work, work on your projection because you're going to have to be yelling over lots, lots of sound effects, lots of people running around yelling at each other and all this stuff. So just work on your projection, get it from the guts. Like, pretend you're Santa Claus. You're just, oh, 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 oh! Now, like, just belt it out because the only people, I mean, you want to speak to Lee up in the booth. You want to, you want to have the person up in the booth good to hear. So this needs to be good. Oh, you guys got to scream at the top of your lungs. She doesn't have to hear your friends. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I, I thought, I thought it was like, deaf one dumb man is up there okay. and he wants to hear it. Is it works? Even though he's deaf. Even though yeah. he's deaf? Yeah, so just scream, all right? I mean, it's just... Obviously, the director's primary purpose in a production, this production or any, is management of the actors, um, direction of the actors, and um, uh, coming up with an artistic vision for the appearance of the show and the, the way that the actors interact together. But, I mean, I think that a director wears a lot of hats, especially in this organization, because we... We all contribute so many things other than just what our specific title says. So in addition to you know, helping um, the actors with their technique and their movement and their character development and all these sorts of things, uh, I think that I also kind of serve as you know, PR sometimes, technical consultant sometimes. I mean, there's so many other things that, uh, that go on. Um, to make the show really come out the way that the audience sees it in the end. Come on your ways! Open your mouth! Here's what, here is that which will give you language, cat. Open your mouth. This will shake your shaking, I can tell you, and that soundly. Can I tell who's your friend? Open your mouth again! <laughs> I should know that voice. It should be, oh, but he is drowned, and these are devils. Okay, oh, bend me. <laughs> Full legs and two voices? Which of he or Adrian first begins to grow? Sorry. Which of he or Adrian, for a good wager, first begins to grow? The old cock. The cock. Done. The wager? A laughter. A match. Though this island does seem to be a <laughs> desert. So you're paid. Uninhabitable and almost inaccessible? Yes. Oh, yet? <laughs> Could not. One more time. Wager. A little longer on the pause. 
One of the really interesting things about auditioning a cast and looking at the development of a cast is that when you first audition them, sometimes your gut instincts are good, sometimes they're not. And um, what inevitably happens is by the end of auditions, you feel really happy with your cast selection. And then during the first couple of rehearsals, you start biting your nails going, oh my god, did I do the right thing? And uh, after a couple of rehearsals more, you can't see any of those people in any other role than you initially chose them for. So I'm at that point now where I'm looking at the cast and I'm going, man, you know, these people are exactly, they're in exactly the right roles and I can really see them starting to develop. It's a really satisfying feeling, but there's always going to be that sort of valley or that sort of drop right during the first or second rehearsal, you know, that, that first rehearsal week where you go, Oh man, because that's the point where people still haven't even become accustomed to their lines they're reading in their book and, and um, they don't quite have the character and, and uh, so that, that can be a frightening experience but yeah, I'm to the point now where I'm, I'm definitely really happy with my cast selections. And like this insubstantial pageant faded, leave not a rack behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made. And our little life is rounded with a sleep. Sir, I am vexed. Uh, my character is Prospero. Uh, he is Miranda's father, and him and his daughter Miranda have been stranded on this island that the play takes place on for about 13 years, uh, over which time he's uh, made a lot of efforts into uh, improving his magic. He's a magician. Also, he was the Duke of Milan, uh, where, uh, and they were thrown out of Milan by his brother. So I'm bitter, I'm angry, but at the same time, uh, this situation has actually given me a chance to be very close to my daughter and do a lot about bringing her up uh, that I might have not done had I stayed where I was. He has an enormous amount of control over what goes on around him, and therefore that gives him a certain uh, wry charm. He, he enjoys his power, um, and it's, it's a lot of fun to portray that kind of character. And also, one part of Prospero's character that is very intimidating is that this being Shakespeare's last play, a lot of people feel that Prospero is in a certain way Shakespeare, especially during the epilogue. Um, someone who has control over the situation in the same way that Shakespeare had control over the place he wrote. Uh, and therefore, especially when it comes to the epilogue, there's a lot of um, responsibility to portray the character as someone who is in complete control and very self-assured. And it's not even both together. He dies, I get to take over, right? <laughs> oh, so that's your plan. Ha ha ha! Yes, that's my plan. But now you'll have to kill us all, because we all know now. Uh, my character is Miranda, and she's the daughter of Prospero. And uh, they both get stuck on the island, and that's the island where all the action takes place. Um, basically, she's just kind of hanging out, doesn't really know that much about the rest of the world, just knows her father and, and the stuff he taught her. Okay, so let's try to get it under your arm so she can try to grab it and then you can do something okay. like that. Yeah. And then that way you can say... <laughs> I want to influence the actors um, as little as possible and in as positive a way as possible. And what I mean is, I, I want to be the person that turns on the light switch when they can't find uh, where they're going, when they're sort of stumbling about in the dark. I want to provide them with um, the necessary direction to make things click, but I don't want to feed them their character. I don't want to, to mold an actor into the way that I see the character, because often I learn the most when I um, watch them do their own interpretation of it. So I want to give them enough um, direction and enough guidance that it can help them to find their character, but I don't want to dictate what their character will be like. There's something around there. I can't. I'm not the other one exactly what I'm just thinking. So, but I'm trying. Uh, but otherwise, very good. Uh, just projecting, enunciate. That's all I've been saying anyway. So, good job, though. Very good. Um, yeah, yeah, you really do have a very deep tone. So, I wouldn't worry about that. Um, sometimes, you know, watching yourself on video, it's. It's not always a, a great... Well, I, I also noticed that like, last year, watching the video from last semester, too. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I just don't, don't want to sound like a little prissy. No, actually, you're, 
your voice is very deep tone though. If it was high, I would definitely tell you. I think uh, both you and Francesca have fairly low tones. So I'll watch for it more, but I really don't think it's a problem for you. Antonio is probably the most evil character in the play. He's uh, pretty much the opposite of Prospero, who is, who is you know, the, the good character. I'm, I'm his like, evil brother. Um, Antonio took it over from him and banished uh, Prospero to an island. So he's pretty much the evil bastard of uh, all the characters. Can I sit on that camera? No, you're good. Put them in a Bring with you a box or something for your stuff and keep them in your bed. Um, I play Ferdinand, and basically he's washed ashore on the island, and he thinks everyone else is dead, and he wanders the island um, looking for anyone or anything, and he happens to run across um, Prospero and Miranda. Um, he instantly falls in love with Miranda. He, he ends up marrying Miranda without his father's blessing because he believes his father is dead. His, um, he is the prince, Ferdinand is the prince of Naples. His father was king and so he believes that he is king now of Naples if he ever makes it back there. The challenge of the role is you have to come across as not human. I mean, um, there has to be a distinction between you and the other characters who are all very, you know, flamboyant in some way. They've all got traits that stand out. But you have to stand out as not a typecast person, but as a different type of being, as, as something that is undefined, that no one has seen before. So you really have to build it up on yourself and uh, kind of decide for your own how human he is and how, how much of a beast he is. Tomorrow, 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 uh, uh, tomorrow, it's only a day away. Are we going to show you guys where the pop table is for tonight? He's on video team and a singing mic. I'm playing uh, Gonzalo. And um, he's, the, uh, he's the king's counselor. He's sort of a, sort of a wise old man. He's in, in, in some ways, he's, he's very innocent to the way, you know, the real world works, um, but in other ways he's very wise. And he also starts this whole big uh, speech about communism and how everyone should, you know, live on a commune and not work and just have stuff handed to them by nature and so forth and get rid of all the trappings of society. So he, he seems to be Shakespeare just saying, like, someone wrote this, and someone wrote this, and this is interesting with this, right? I think it's going to be a, it's going to be a great show. Already we have uh, a lot of a lot of uh, tech. We have a we have a great set, and even with two days of set construction, it already looks great. Um, my expectations I I, ex I expect that it's going to be a smash. I mean, I, I I would love to see the show just be the biggest hit that we've had since we're doing stuff in conjunction with the Phoenix Theater and trying to save the Phoenix Theater and help performing arts in Brevard. If we could get that large showing. It could be a major hit, and it would make the uh, cast feel good. Definitely. Definitely. Most of my characters have been pretty much the same, actually. One of these days, I'm going to get some really rich, bitchy kind of chick, and I'm going to rule and hump you all over that character. Yeah. They're doing, they're doing a great job. I mean, I'm just so impressed. Last night, oh man, it just totally blew me away. They're doing really good. Huh? They're doing really good. They, they really are. They're kicking ass. We just gotta make money. Oh, when it comes down to it, we gotta make some money here.
doing some second trucking here. This is the wheel built by Gustavo and Gary. Well, mostly uh, Gustavo. Mostly Gustavo. Mostly Gustavo. Yeah, so we're just finishing up. Well, basically the set is set on the island, and Lee wants it to be kind of abstract, so we've been making it dark. But <laughs> the color scheme has to change a little bit because it's not all dark. Some of it's pastels. For some reason. Pastels? Pastels. Okay. I don't know why. But for some reason, they're pastels. Yeah, a good turnout today, though. Usually, you see the turnout. Yeah, I know, too. I know. We had a lot of people come in today. Uh, got a lot of stuff done. We even had some crack guys come by and wanted to make their paddle. No one but died yet, so that's No one's good. died? No. Yeah. The cast is getting sick, though. So. Huh? That's, that's the cast. Part this takes a lot of time, as you can see. Time this was supposed to be done a month ago, right? Oh, yeah. Set was supposed <laughs> to be done a month ago. <laughs> Uh, we're, a month, we're a month behind schedule on set, but we had to take it apart for the cultural fair. But, well, we're, for, well, we're on schedule for us, but for lead time, we're a month behind. Yeah, for lead time. Otherwise, we're fine. College players' time, we are so far ahead of schedule, it's unbelievable. Oh, the, uh, I mean, the paint's dry. Yeah, I yeah. know. It's going to be dry on opening night. Hey, night. that would be, that would be, that would be a first oh. for any performance, I think. That would be great for the costume people, too. I know. Well, uh, it should be bigger than other opening nights. The publicity's been... Uh, Done really well. Uh, seen ads all over, uh, radio spots. Uh, everybody on campus seems to know about it, so uh, I don't see why it wouldn't be as big or bigger than any of the other opening nights in the past uh, uh, several years. Should be good. All I have to worry about now is living up to the expectations. Show's looking really cool. Between me and Lee, we've got pretty much the same idea of what we wanted kind of an abstract look. Uh, Mostly the color basis I have is blue and red, which makes this really, really cool contrast and kind of blends in for a really neat purple. So I'm really happy with the way it looks. Uh, we've been doing last minute changes, you know, some minor stuff, but other than that, it looks really, really cool. I'm very happy. Honestly, this place is way too old. Um, Gleason is somewhat, I know it doesn't sound old, 30 years old. Some of the stuff we're using right now is way, way out of date. Uh, pretty much something blows every night. Other than that, we had to ask a friend of ours to lend us a light board. Instead of having just nine on this one, we now have nine and twenty-four. Uh, so having two light boards means we have two people at lights for the first time ever. Dean is here, Maine. We've got Rich on Spotlight who isn't really here today, but he'll be here soon enough. Yeah, you're done the everywhere. I have wings like that. But these, um, these wires need to be like a little bit shorter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm in charge of sewing costumes with Georgia, and we've sewn a lot of them, and the rest of them we borrowed. This is the third time I'm making Trinculo's pants, and hopefully they'll come out right this time. And I'm getting away from my. Other than that, the only problem is. All the actors complaining. Excuse me? Yes. But Erin er helps. That's right. And what am I? What would I be? What would I be in this play? I would be acting this play? I believe so. Yes. So you can't make that generality that all the actors. No one cares about your Many of the actors. Most of the actors. No, no. Most. No one cares about your I'm king of second show. I'm going to that. Do you want to get this on video? Hey, give me my sword. Okay. Cass, yes, I haven't worked with in my life. <laughs> this show's gonna be a hit. <laughs> Thank you. This show sucks. These actors suck. This is the worst cast I've ever worked with in my life. I'm totally straight, but my friend here, he, he loves, loves the cat. Okay? It's not an accident. Oh, yeah, it is, dude. And then the producer, I guess, keeps Chris and I in check by always serving as a liaison between us and the cast and us and the crew and making sure that, you know, we're, I mean, we're all students and we're all in this um, for positive reasons um, as our, an artistic outlet and, and to have fun. So um, sometimes when, when things get kind of heated, you know, we can forget the reason why we initially started doing it. And the producer helps to, to make sure that everyone's happy and that uh, we don't forget why we're here. Keep yourself busy, do your homework, whatever you have to do, but be quiet. If you want to talk, go outside. If you're outside, don't miss your cues. I don't want to see unnecessary interruptions anymore. This show has gotten a lot of publicity, which we haven't gotten before. 
a lot of the community is going to come and see this show. Which is really good for you guys, because you know you have a good audience. But at the same time, if you let them down, they won't come back. And we can't afford that. Devil <laughs> take your fingers! <laughs> Prithee, stand further off. Yes, that. Prithee, stand further off. I think that's what it is. I'm sorry. Okay, it's all right. Come, proceed. That's not right. As I told you, it is custom with him in the afternoon to sleep. She's about to push it off. Just go that way. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> then I may as well. Having first possessed his books. You know what? You know what? It's too late for everyone to criticize right now, tonight. All right? This is not set construction right now. This is not costume building right now. So everyone who's bitching about the costumes, they're not done. The set is not done, okay? All right. Places, please. I'm ready, and I think everybody's individually ready. I'm just worried about us all collectively being ready. Disgusted, and I just can't believe it's happening to myself. You know, it's just a girl thing. I mean, we're just sitting here, uh, just you know, being friends, right? Sure. You know, Lance from Insane. I shall no more to see, to see. Here shall I die ashore. Very scurvy to play the man's hero. Well, here's my cover. Oh, the master, the swabber, the boats in an eye. 
seriously though, you guys are doing very well. The audience sucks. It's a big audience, but they suck. You're not responding to anything. So you guys have got to give more energy. They're low. You guys have just got to give more. I know it's tiring, but 120%. Everything you got, all your projection, I want you to chill out more. Okay, I'm you're losing your face a lot, and you have a very pretty face. I want to see it. I'll flash him. Be nice. I mean, we are filming, but well, I mean, this whole this whole thing is really just about having fun. You know, we all love theater, and and um, I really want the Tempest to be a show that leaves an impact. And even through doing this, I think it probably will. But um, I have a real longer term vision for how I hope this show will affect college players, and um, in a positive way. And uh, I hope that you know the cast just has a great time, and it's it's a show to remember for them and the audience. We have to shh. We have to be quiet. Our tech's gonna come in here and bitch at us. Now, I want spirits to enforce, art to enchant, and my ending is despair. Unless I be relieved by prayer, which pierces so that the salts mercy itself and frees all faults. As you from crimes would pardon be, let your indulgence set me free. The final word is... Um, this has been one of the best experiences of my life. It's really been great. I, uh, I always knew this organization was capable of this. I just never imagined that it would be so good. They, it's a fabulous group of people, and it's been an honor and a privilege to work with them, and uh, I'm glad it's all over, because now I can rest. But no, it's really been great. I've loved it, and uh, I do it all over again. So, I don't know, I'm, I'm happy it's over, but I'm also sad. It's a bittersweet thing, so. I don't know. It's been a great experience, and uh, I hope that Shakespeare is not rolling over in his grave right now. I think he would have enjoyed it, and uh, I hope that whoever came here who hated Shakespeare now, you know, maybe maybe finds it at least a little bit intriguing. So I think we've done our job. It's been good. Oh, you taking your staff? Why? <laughs> you know something? I've always wanted to do this. Hey. <laughs> It's cool. It's a good souvenir, man. Absolutely. First off, this thing is solid. It would hurt my knee to do that. And secondly, I want this. This is mine. Okay? And that, all I know is that before I gave my monologue, I wanted to cry. That's all. Thank you. We're all going to get drunk and play ping pong. Well, not the drunk for me, but another ping pong. We're on a ping pong table. Well, well, well some that. people will get drunk and I'll get to poke them. That's good to me.